So you've got a part-time PhD, a full-time life, and about a million things to do on your to-do list. Today we are not doing fluffy advice or just their motivated nonsense. I'm gonna walk you through how I learned the hard way of how to stay on top of part-time PhD goals without losing your mind or burning out, mostly. So grab your coffee, your tea, or whatever you're surviving on these days, and let's get into it. What exactly are you trying to achieve this year? Finishing the whole PhD sounds fantastic every year, <laughs> but maybe you need to take a more realistic approach and define exactly what you are wanting to achieve this year, taking into account that you are working for probably full-time or part-time and your PhD is also part-time. I think that if you had asked me any year between 2018 and 2024, I would have definitely had told you my yearly goal would be to finish the thesis <laughs> every single year. But in the final years, the final last three years, 20 minute version of that answer would have been honestly much more detailed. So what do I mean by details? I mean, you define the tasks that you have to do really, really well. You time box them based on as good an estimate as you can. And you also try to be very conscious of the deadlines that are coming up, whether it's replying to emails, to journal articles, to registration admin, but really be clear and conscious of what deadlines are coming up because when you're doing a PhD part-time, these deadlines can creep up on you very quickly and you might be surprised that all of a sudden you need to desperately do something because you haven't actually had it consciously written in a central place. So keep track of what you need to do. So the second thing that I really became conscious about was time management, which is unsurprising because if you're not conscious of your time, literally years will go past before you make any significant progress. And this is something that I definitely struggled with, um, especially when I moved to a different country and started a new job and it's all very exciting. But at the end of the day, you actually just don't realize that you months are going past without actually making progress, which is obviously not conducive to finishing. I learned that it's unrealistic, especially once you have your family of your own, to expect large amounts of time to work on your PhD uninterrupted. But what you can do is look for the chunks of time, either during the week or on the weekend, where you can have scheduled dedicated time to work on your PhD. So you need to negotiate with your, your work, your family obligations, whoever else is influencing your life and really try and schedule it in a systematic way and like almost as like a routine. So like every Saturday morning from nine to 12, you're unavailable because you're working on your PhD and this is like sacred time. And what I really found useful was to try and think of it like, it's like a non-negotiable doctor's appointment, like you have to go. Um, and that really protects it and protects your working time from being overridden by other obligations. And this will really help you managing any stress or anxiety that you have um, because you can see that you're making progress on your PhD um, and therefore you're less likely to actually need a real doctor's appointment. So even if it's just 90 minutes every Saturday, um, that's progress. You don't need to lock yourself in a library or a shared office space for the whole day or the whole weekend to feel like you're making progress, but just do what is possible. You'll probably start making more progress than what you possible. Also some weeks are just going to be crazy and you're not going to make your dedicated time for working on your PhD. I think the trick is not to beat yourself up about it but just try and get back on track as soon as you can uh, with the tasks that you can then quickly pick up and get back into the swing of things. So when I was trying to finish my PhD I was like pushing really really hard to try and finish the thesis but at the same time I was then trying to publish journal articles at the same time. This was inefficient because I landed up only working on the articles and not on the thesis. So what I also found really useful is being super clear on what you really, really need to do. So if priority one is finishing the thesis, then only work on your thesis until you're happy with the progress on that. And then if you have like um, a mental gap or you feel like you can take some time off from working on the thesis because you're waiting for feedback or something like that, then use that time to do the stuff that's maybe not highly critical, but critical, like publishing your work in journal articles. It's a, it's a much better way of going about prioritizing your work. My next point is that doing a PhD, especially doing a part-time PhD is incredibly lonely because 
doing a PhD is lonely because you're only one working on that topic so intensely, but doing a part-time PhD is even lonelier because you don't even have that university vibe or connection um, sitting on campus or working closely with other people's on maybe shared projects. You only have your little PhD thesis that you have to work on. And I think it's important to look at your support system around you, your support crew, and try and identify who can you rely on. And I found personally for me, what worked really well for me is that, you know, you talk to all these different people, your friends, your family, and certain per people respond in a way that like encourages you or motivates you and other people really just like drain your energy down and you just focus on talking with the people that help you with their answers not help you with your thesis but just help you emotionally and for the people that don't understand it or can't relate to you or don't get why you're doing this just let it go talk about other things with them but don't bring up your thesis with them and only talk about your thesis with people that can relate or can be sympathetic or empathetic towards you. So let's be honest, there's many days, weeks and months where you're not going to feel like working on your PhD and I think this is totally normal. If you're struggling with motivation, there is a book called The Obstacles Away by Ryan Holiday and it's basically a sto stoicism, stoicism book um, where he basically gives you a new perspective of how to look at obstacles and how sometimes having the obstacle is the best thing to tackle because it's actually the way forward. So if you're avoiding certain tasks or certain analyses, then read the book because it will maybe help you give you a fresh idea of how to perceive your current situation. I think I'm a bit of a weird one with um, motivation or staying motivated um, because I didn't struggle with that so much. Um, I honestly was so stressed about not finishing the thesis that um, that was not a <laughs> that was not a problem for me. I really uh, felt like I needed to finish it. I honestly don't remember ever sitting down on my desk at Saturday morning and being like, "Oh, I don't feel." motivated to do my PhD. It was more like, ah, oh, I'm so stressed. I finally have five minutes to work on this, so now I'm going to work on it. And on the few days where I really didn't even care anymore because I was too stressed and tired or whatever, then I just drank lots of coffee, which obviously is not healthy or conducive to having a good HRV, but that's, that's what I did. So yeah, how to get to your goals in 2025. Set small realistic goals that are clearly defined block your time and like a doctor's appointment and stick to them and really look for people that you can get support or feedback from um, or encouragement from and keep to those people do not deviate other thing is you're doing a huge huge project like this is a huge undertaking so give yourself a break every now and again it's not easy if it was easy everyone would be doing it give give yourself the appreciation that you're taking something really strong on and you're gonna get through it because if you're the kind of person who takes on such an ambition you're the kind of person that can get through it and even when it's not perfect you can just make progress and that is actually at the end of the day good enough so let me know in the comments below what are you struggling with what is working for you or how did you get through your part-time PhD or your PhD. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.